Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 53 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series, where today we're working with Nature's Aura. We're fighting the Bell Ringer. Uh, how tough of a challenge does that boss hold? Not much, let me tell you. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Welcome back to another wonderful, glorious, beautiful day here in the world of the Andrada. As you can tell, I literally just started recording as the world loaded because we still got chunks loading. Oh, I thought I fell off. Uh, anyway, in between episodes, uh, I went ahead and I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this. I had set up our enchanting table uh, before last episode because I was looking for enchants, specifically sharpness, I think it was that I was looking for there. Um, so I went ahead and got that going. We're good to go there uh, and did the thing. So I went ahead and got our uh, lethal blood seeking Enderium sword. I got the um, increased the 113 percent critical hit damage increase on here. And I found another I think it was an axe that I had in my inventory that was like an uncommon that had an additional 61 percent critical hit chance. So, yeah, let me tell you, this sword is ridiculous. Basically, one shots everything. If we crit, if we do a jump and then hit something, it, they're dead. They're done. They're dead. They're done. Um, and it's already repaired our armor. So we're good to go there with the mending on these and everything. Uh, now, the diamond paxel, the only caveat, the experience. I don't know if this is the way that it just works works but when i attack something with this excuse me and i get the experience uh it doesn't recharge the paxel i have to actually kill them with the paxel and i i i don't know why i don't know what is up with that but yeah that's just the way that the cookie crumbles here um so yeah let's go ahead and hop down here and then go talk about a few things so uh, first things first, it was mentioned in my uh, Discord and on the YouTube by James, uh, one of the developers of the mod pack that I have a bell sitting right here. Yeah, uh, so there's a bell here. Uh, I have a bell. You may have noticed it last episode. I, I had a bell. I went to like four different villages to go find a freaking bell. Uh, and this guy was right here the entire time so go the andrada uh but yeah hey we got an extra bell uh we might need it for other creatures from this mod because this is from the uh meet your fight meet your f fight meet you fight no meet your fight um so we have other mobs reduces damage so like we have the bell ringer uh teleports you 16 blocks reveals nearby hostile enemies so the haunted bell. So we have a bell ringer. We have a Dame Fortuna and we have a swamp jaw. Those are the mobs. Uh, and there we go. Devil's anti summons the Dame Fortuna and sometimes do more damage. I kind of like the idea of that fortune's favor. OK, I like doing more damage. Does this thing have a usage? No. All right. I'll take that. Um, and then ba -ba 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 -ba, what is summoning the frost, the fossil beat? This summons the swamp jaw. OK, so that's the recipes for those things. Uh, and then I'm assuming like the swamp jaw gets us like a, yeah, the bone raker plus two extra attack damage, charges shockwaves. It just gets us some stuff and things that we can get this. A phantasmal rifle. That kind of sounds cool. Projectiles go through blocks, but I'm going to assume. Uh, yeah, that needs phantoplasm and actually. This would be makeable or craftable with the haunted bell and we fight the 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 bell ringer. Anyway, uh, so we got that going for us. I do want to shout out some comments that I have gotten over the past couple episodes uh, just because, you know, I appreciate them and it does really help out overall. So uh, first off, again, I want to shout out Night Shard for pointing out the whole disenchanting mechanic with our pneumaticraft. Uh, they have been commenting in the Discord, giving me tips and tricks just overall for the pack and everything. Um, but definitely the uh, disenchanting and the enchanting for the uh, pneumaticraft. Freaking awesome. Kristoff uh, Mordost said that if we go back over home, I was asking about the compacting button here, uh, right here. And what he said it does is when we have like if I were to take out like half a stack of nether quartz and half a stack of nether quartz, right? We're still at 500 stacks of each. If I were to press the compact button, um, I thought it would uh, combine the two. 
This is very laggy, by the way. Compact equals stacks. Do it. Do it, 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 do it. Okay, well, that's what I thought that that did. From what he was saying, that's what I assumed. That's what that meant, but I guess not. So, uh, well, thank you, Christoph, but I don't know what it does still. Um, a few people have mentioned that when I was crafting my uh, natural altar, orientation does not matter for the nature's aura. It was the tree fertilizer that was uh, what caused the, the thing to not work. It was also mentioned that what I should do is leave this a grass block and then place the uh, gold dust or place like stone around this so I can place the gold dust on the stone so I don't have to memorize the pattern, which makes total sense. I don't know why I didn't think of doing that before in the first place. Uh, so we'll do that. We're going to probably do a little bit more nature's aura today. Um, oh, for our assembly line. So I got a comment on uh, the other day's episode regarding the assembly line. Uh, and as you guys know, it's been, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's been a point of contention in the comments on my past couple episodes, but it's been mentioned quite a few times. Uh, and it's been a little bit confusing because some people are saying you do need two different assemblies platforms or assembly setups. Some people are saying you don't. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, got a comment from Mute Tiefling, uh, one of the developers of the pack, saying that one is enough. The only recipe that I can tell uh, that is an issue here. So if I look at uh, pneumatic craft, plat, sorry, I have a bandaid on my finger and it's making it difficult to type. Actually, uh, if we look at the crafting for this, there is only one thing that uses uh, the same item twice. And it looks like it is um, the compressed iron so if we scroll through this so this is rough machine frame to a machine frame yeah that's fine what we're looking for is our inputs the exact same inputs now these are like they look the same but they're they are different things so we don't have to worry about that uh compressed iron turns into elevator frames gold turns into trap doors Yeah, so this is one of them. Block of compressed iron turns into a pressure chamber valve if we drill it. But that's the only one that's same, same. Netherite, netherite drill bit. Uh, block of gold. So block of gold would be another, another thing that could potentially cause a conflict. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark block of gold just so we can see exactly what that is. And then see, like, how often are we going to actually use this, right? Uh, and then block of compressed iron. Okay, so those look like the only two that are exactly the same. So if we look at the usage of block of gold inside of this, a block of gold, if we drill it, is going to turn into gold trap doors. How often are we going to use gold trap doors? Um, other than to make an industrial shock activated trap door or to create a netherite trap door, we're not. And I don't plan on doing any of that. So having it available to be drilled and lasered is fine. We would only need one assembly set up for this. And then the same thing is going to apply for uh, blocks of compressed iron. And this is the one that caused me to set up two of these in the first place. Uh, drilling a block of compressed iron makes pressure chamber valves. Drilling and lasering makes advanced pressure tubes. How often am I going to need pressure chamber valves? I, I, I can't say I'm going to need 20 of them very often uh, unless they're used for crafting purposes. But then again, I can make 20 of them at one go, which is not that difficult. Yeah, this is part of the, the, the craft process. Like so advanced assembly tables and jet boots tier one even not even the tier two so if i were to craft one of these or i can say i craft four sets of these and i make 80 pressure chamber valves i'd be good for the pack most likely like i don't know what these things are like what the usage of these advanced tabley things is tablies these table things are but yes so uh i'm going to go ahead and confirm right here right now live in front of uh this uh, in front of this live audience that we don't need this or this right so we can go ahead and get rid of all this and i should have used my drill and now i have an extra set of assembly stuff it is what it is you know it's not really gonna it doesn't bother me too much it wasn't terribly too difficult to make just slightly slightly difficult but yeah um where's my program there's my program. So we can go ahead and actually, and we can put the extra speed upgrades in there. Sure, why not? Uh, and I know I already have the drill, but we can just go ahead and combine them again because I don't want to go out and go get it. 
and there we go and i'll end up moving this over and centering this on this uh again just to make sure that everything's all you know hunky dory good to go but we confirmed we went through all of the recipes we do not need to set up two of these at all all right confirmed here right now we should be good to go with this all right that's that uh, what else do we have? We have a couple more comments. Uh, Scott Christofferson mentioned that our Nature's Compass in our end, end exploration episode, uh, we're going to want to use our uh, Nature's Compass. If we target end highlands, that'll find us end cities because uh, they're always in end highlands biomes. And uh, the Amber Land and Sulphur Springs biomes are going to be handy to go explore too, uh, because they're going to the Amber Land is going to get us a resource that we're going to need for something or other. And then the Sulphur Springs gets us another resource along with sulfur right um james mentioned when our end exploration episode that we missed our best loot uh when i broke into the end city if i would have broken if i would have went up just a little bit i would have found the library that had books and all kinds of stuff along with shulker boxes and and chests and all kinds of stuff so um let's see what else uh fat man shaving which is a great name, by the way. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. I upgraded these to diamond. Uh, so we should set up mechanism bins for our honeycombs, which is looking to be like a good idea because uh, we have resources available to us. Like if we need anything, we, we got it here. We have tons of stuff, like I, it, overwhelmingly, um, an overwhelming amount of stuff. I really should set up mechanism bins and have all this piped. I'm just I'm just waiting to be able to do it like remotely like i don't want to have to run cables everywhere you know y'all know what i'm saying i don't want to run cables and then lastly we have leonardo correa um who mentions the thermoelectric generator from immersive engineering and if you know anything about the thermoelectric generator in this pack uh you probably know where he is going so apparently the thermoelectric generator from immersive engineering is super cheap to make steel Constantin copper, right? We can make these right now. And the way that these work is you need to provide on one side of it. Can we make one? I don't think I have Constantin plates. No. Okay. Um, if you provide a heat source and a cooling source on one side of each of these, or maybe it's both. I don't know. We'll have to experiment with it. We are going to experiment with it, by the way. This is going to happen. Um, if you put uh, a blue ice and a blazing blood block next to it, uh, it'll generate 32 R for tick passively. Doesn't seem like much, but do you see how cheap this is? We could build a whole freaking tower with blue ice and blazing blood buckets. Blue ice. Um, yes, please. Right over there in our wherever the heck our, our ice tower is. Uh, there's blue ice over there. We can get that. We can get that easy. Or if anything, we can convert it here. Um, and yeah, blazing blood. We can set up a, a, a blaze spawner. We have a blaze spawner. We just need to pull it out and put it into a tinker smeltery and let it automate itself. So yeah, um, thermoelectric generators, um, tower of thermoelectric generators is going to be incoming. Absolutely. And you can set them up in a checkered pattern too, and then just run pipes into them and then get massive amounts of completely get out of here mr tarantula hawk oh are you an apotheosis boss you are roberto the superior look at that wow he kind of hit hard though didn't he roberto's oh <laughs> check that out thanks roberto no more need for mending on our pants i guess i'm gonna be stripping in chance here Okay, debilitating steam, 13 seconds, geez. Uh, well, no more need for mending and soulbound because Roberto just gave us uh, unbreakable pants. Yeah, all right, well, I like that. So we're going to be swapping over to that. Can that please end? Uh, and I'll strip the, um, I put, uh, what are those things called? I put in a fix on this, so we'll strip that off and then we'll put everything on the pants. All right, thanks, Roberto. That'll be in between episodes. You all, you guys have already seen me do enchanting and all that stuff. So today what we're going to do is work on uh, we're going to fight the bell ringer. I want to get this done. Uh, check out this and see what this is like. So we're going to need to get our uh, lightning arrow. And I remember oh, it was the TNT arrow that I had to be super careful with. Where's my diamond arrow, by the way? Oh, there it is. I should probably. Well, I'll put it away and I don't actually need all these lightning arrows because I have endless quiver. I need to get my bow enchanted, too, by the way. Uh, with power and punch and multi-shot maybe and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. I don't know what we want to do on our bow. 
but we'll figure something out. But anyway, uh, so just, yeah, thank you to everybody who's giving me tips and tricks. Like I said, I call out at the end of every episode uh, asking tips, tricks, suggestions, anything like that. And if 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 I like it, if we can utilize it, we will. And I you get credit for it. I'm not going to take credit for your ideas or anything like that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll call out and give you credit where credit is due. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Spectre's Eye is going to require. Oh, no, we're doing Haunted Bell. So a bell. Any kind of atom relic, one fluorite, three ectoplasm. So we have that, 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 and that. And then we just got out. It's lightning channeling, right? Yes. So if we do that, get out of here. Don't, don't. Okay, good. I didn't want to fire many of them. I didn't want to light it on fire. Um, and then toll the bell. Haunted bell summons the bell ringer. Now, I don't know what this fight is going to be like. Is he going to be like a wither? Is it going to break blocks? Is it going to, you know, do anything crazy? So maybe we should like head elsewhere to fight this thing. Because I don't know, is this going to be a pushover? Is it going to be a completely easy fight? Is it going to be challenging? Oh, by the way, I did go ahead and get uh, the other enchants, Ender Disruption and Soulbound on here uh, by just honing up. So we should have guild three. You should be able to see it. Yeah, gilded three there on my Endyrium blade. And then we put mending on it. Sound good? Sound good. Let's go ahead and go to... Um, I don't know. I was trying to be like limited on how much experience I use. But we'll come over here to our desert. And we'll fight it over here. Now, why I put this over here, I don't 100% know. I have to actually fly over to the desert. Slightly annoying, but that's okay. All right, so oh look, experience. I like experience. It's free. It's free real estate. Okay, so bell ringer. What do I do? All right, so here's the bell ringer. Some cool music going on. I wish she wasn't flying up in the air, though. Look at that. <laughs> Those crits are ridiculous. <laughs> It took out the first hit that I did on him did like no damage. The second one basically deleted the man. <laughs> oh, that's great. Where did I get another lightning arrow? I don't even know. Did it like did I pick it up off of the ground? Did I duplicate my lightning arrow? I don't I don't need it like <laughs> I don't need the lightning arrow. OK, uh, I do need my magnet back out, though just in case I have anything. Okay, so we got Phantoplasm. So we picked that up, and we also got an epic shader grab bag for fighting a boss, boop, which turned into Nether Forged. No idea what that looks like, but it can be applied to a balloon, revolver, railgun, minecart, chemical thrower, mining drill, buzzsaw, plated shield, and banner from Immersive. Phantoplasm is used to make Aether Glazed Cupcakes, Spectre's Grass, plus two reach distance. I do love in increased reach distance. Uh, and the passage is told teleports you up to 16 blocks through any surface. But what we what we are going to use it for is the specter's eye. So we can go ahead and go back home and get this going. And the specter's eye is made in a just dumping it into water. Great. So enchanted ash. That's the only enchanted book I have left in there, by the way, now. Uh, so we have the enchanted ash. We have phantoplasm. Uh, we need golden coins. Those are over in our chest over there. I just pointed. You couldn't see that. We need lapis dust, which is easy to get. We'll just crush this guy up. We need mana powder. And I think I probably no. I have mana gems and mana diamonds. Mana powder is just crushing a source gem or pulverizing a source gem. I remember now. I remember we have plenty of source gems out there in our chest out there, out there in our chest out there. Yeah, that's the way it works. Uh, and phantoplasm. OK, so let's go ahead and pulverize this. And pulverize that. That's going to get us our lapis dust and our mana powder. And then I need six atom coins. Oh, look, I already have gold coins already ready to go. So then I just need to drop these into water. So we can just use right here, right? Bam, 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 bam. If I didn't pick them up. OK, magnet, go away. And I need the rest of my coins, please. Hello? You stole my coins. Y'all see that? I just got gypped. The water is a thief. 
Yeah. The water is a thief. It stole my coins. Oh, wait. Then I put them in the wrong. I put them. Never mind. Okay. The water is not a thief. I take it back, Mr. Water. That was my fault. I uh, <laughs> I did the thing. Okay. You, 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 you. Okay. Stop picking them up. Hello? All right. It's not going to work because it's in this thing. Am I also missing something? I did. I missed the enchanted ash this time. All right. You know what? We're just going to make a singular singular square of water. I don't know why the water is running over there. Is your refrigerator running? Anyway. Okay. Bam, 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 bam. Do the thing. Give me my specter eye. Okay. Cool. Specter's eye. And with that being done, we can now get our environmental eye, not usage. So that gets us a world eye, whatever that is. We can craft the environmental eye and be able to see our aura. All right. We would need them to see our aura. Make sure that we're not overloading or underloading our area because we're about to start needing to pay attention to this. So we need four tree bark, two gold leaf. And then we're going to need uh, eight of these so we can get, you know, the gold powder done. And then tree bark. I should have some. Yeah. We're going to want some bone meal because we like speeding things up. That takes care of that, that, that uh, one silver ingot and then a twisted sapling. We're going to have to go buy the twisted sapling. An emerald. Now, the next thing that I need to get is something that increases my movement speed. Why isn't there an enchant for speed? You know, like run fast. We needed a twisted sapling. I'll take that. Thank you. Let's close you guys up. Go to bed. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. And then we will fly over yonder. Whoop. And get this set up. Okay. So again, what I want to do is make sure that I actually set this up properly. And we're going to go ahead and replace the uh, stuff like has been suggested. But we want the Book of Natural Aura. And we're going to want the Natural Altar. Bam. No, not the Natural Altar. The... What is this thing called? Ritual of the Forest. Right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and replace these blocks. But not those ones. Sometimes having efficiency on your pickaxe is a, a little bit too, too good. It's a little too efficient on my magnet. Okay, so there we go. So we can go ahead and replace this with something else like, you know, uh, do I have any other kind of stone? I really need to upgrade my dank, actually. Maybe we'll do that this episode, too. This is going to be the maintenance episode, I guess. This doesn't really fit the vibe. Stone would probably fit a little better, but hey, it is what it is. So we're going to convert these over to gold powder. We're going to put this away. And now I know I just got to put it on to each one of these and we're good to go. OK, so there's the gold powder and then gold leaf, gold leaf. And we're going to test this out. Everybody's saying that I don't need to have these in any specific order. I trust everybody, but we're going to test it out for ourselves, too. Plant our tree and make it grow up. You kidding me, Chuck? Are you kidding me, Chuck? Bone meal. Uh, it's going to be nighttime. Trees don't like to grow at night, do they? Maybe that's what the issue was there. There we go. Look, it didn't do it. Uh, I, well, it didn't do it. Gold powder is all laid out correctly. The recipe is four tree bark. One, two, three, four. Silver ingot, specter's eye, two gold leaf. Two gold leaf, silver ingot, specter's eye. Why didn't it work? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? 
I, I, let's try again. Maybe I maybe the bone meal I, I bone mealed too fast. I, I don't know. Maybe because it grew funky. Maybe this one because I replaced this over with non you know dirt or whatever. It grows weird. It, yeah, it had to grow straight because that one grew funky. It it it, it got funked up. That's what happened. That's the colloquial term, funked up. Uh, I have my sleep charm in my charm slot. So, yay, another inventory slot taken up by something that we need to have on us at all times. Uh, one one suggestion. Give me more. Give me more charm slots. Give me more slots. You know, I need to have all these things on me and having them take up inventory space is annoying. And I can't put it in my, ba in my backpack. If I put it in my backpack, it doesn't work. I like having the effects. And I get why. They, it's not enabled because of apotheosis and the apotheosis charms. Uh, these can be super OP, especially since you can enchant them with like unbreaking and I don't know, maybe mending and stuff potentially. Uh, oh, you can infuse them and make them make them better at 100 levels. Jeez Louise. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's that. But anyway, we have environmental eye. So now we can see how much aura we have in our area, uh, which Right now we're sitting at about half, and as far as I understand, that's that's decent. You know, we have we have good aura, we have bad aura, and you can kind of see it's kind of difficult, but there's a little line here, so that's neutral, right? Higher than that is going to be positive, lower than that's going to be negative. So we're kind of actually sort of in the negative over here. Um, I'm curious to know because we did all those uh, infused sun metal things. How are we looking up there? Now, I believe Aura will replenish itself uh, over time from the nearby chunks. So Aura will get pulled from the other chunks. But yeah, look at this. We're, our Aura in this whole area is lower because this is where our altar is. This is where we were doing our initial crafting. So we have lower Aura in this area and way low over here. Our natural altar is full, but our overall Aura in this area is subpar to say the least. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to go ahead and start working on getting some aura generation. Uh, let's go ahead and collect some quests. I checkmarked this. It just tells you that you can find stuff. Uh, bins, diamond chests. Apparently, I never collected the quest for that. Uh, Pneumaticraft. I went and bought a logistics drone just so that we had it. We got our vacuum pump done. Oh, the memory stick. We're going to be using the memory stick. We'll talk about that in a second. Auxiliary process, Steve. Tools and armor. Probably the memory stick. Yep. We're going to talk about the memory stick. Environmental eye. OK, in, in nature's aura loot box. Uh, so what we need to do is start working on getting um, aura generation going, uh, which is going to be this pathway. OK, um, so ebb and flow, give and take. Trees are grown from ancient saplings serve two primary purposes. First, they allow you to replenish the aura, aura in an era aura in an area second the wood is used throughout nature's aura crafting recipes worry not more effective methods of replenishing the aura around you will soon become available so we need to craft ourselves an ancient sapling so we're gonna have to figure out okay emmer seeds we're gonna have to go glitter kelp veiled mushroom dates gold leaf and a regalium ingot do i have any regalium i think i had found some didn't i no okay bummer um Token of fear. Oh, look, we needed one of those, actually. Um, I like that. I like that. We're going to put that away. Speed upgrade. Bullseye 4 and Cavalier. Okay. That can go away. Drig me shards. A Wakame Gunkin. It gives us fire resistance. Nice. Twisted saplings can go away. We can kind of clean up our inventory a little bit. Okay. Um, so we'll figure out what we're going to need to do for origin. Maybe there's a different way other than using the ancient saplings. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But let's talk about our memory stick because this is freaking awesome. Uh, and we're going to actually switch over from the Toma Parisha over to the memory stick. I believe this can hold as many levels as it wants. Yes. The advantage with the memory stick uh, so they're, they're, they're the same thing, right? Toma Parisha, memory stick, stores experience. Um, this, the memory stick can auto absorb. And that's where it becomes much, much, much handier. Uh, so we just need to left click to toggle the XP absorb. And now it will automatically absorb all experience that we get uh, after we go ahead and put all of our stuff into the uh, memory stick. It does have a limit, though, it looks like. So you can kind of see there's a durability bar. Maybe if we F3H. Um, 
Store 2,863 XP, 39 levels. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't tell you how much, but there is a little XP bar or a durability bar down there. But what we can do is go ahead and pull all of our levels out of our Toma Parisia, put them into our memory stick, and then we can keep the Toma Parisia hanging out in case we ever need to have it as a overall XP dump. Like if we go fight the Ender Dragon and we get 260 levels or something like that, and we need you know our memory stick is full, but we can go ahead and put everything in here. And then it'll pick up any extra experience that we end up getting, which is which is great. And it probably can be enchanted, too. Um, memory essence, enchanting apparatus. You use these to make pedestal upgrades for the tanks, stores experience. One XP equals 20 millibuckets. What is this? Memory essence bucket. I don't understand what this thing is saying. Can I? Oh, oh, I can extract experience. Oh, that's kind of nice. Can I get it back now, please? <laughs> no, give me it back. <laughs> I want my experience back. I just put I just put levels in here. OK, well, we now have a bucket of essence. Uh, my bad. I don't know how to get that back out of there now that I converted it over. But hey, just to let you know, you can convert over. Oh, did I end up picking it up? I have three levels for whatever reason. Or did I accidentally give myself levels? This can go into any curio slot, by the way. Okay, well, oh well. We have 32 millibuckets of essence. And we got a token of fear and reinforced integral components. This is going to be nice. We can put it some some machine somewhere. Uh, how about, like, I don't know, something. We'll figure out where that's going to go. For now, it's going to go ahead and here. We can even put it in our flux capacitor and hold more power if we wanted to. But that's going to be the end of today's episode. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Hey, look, you can see my my ocular eye on there, my environmental eye. I kind of honestly don't like that, just to be honest with you. It's kind of messing up my uh, my the Andrada Dragon. Um, anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.